snake your time, that's the one thing that's in control. And if that's the thing in control and it's not God, then you're in your flesh. And who's in control? The flesh is going to be the one in control. And so, uh, uh, verse, six, verse 19 of Galatians says, gives you an example. It says, Galatians 5, 19 says, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, you get mad for no reason, selfish ambition, <laughs> dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and like I warn you as before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. If in your nature these things are taking place, you will not inherit the kingdom of God and you are walking in the flesh. The flesh will manifest itself in these ways. And then, uh, uh, I don't, there's no such thing as a flare-up. I can have a flare-up where I'm angry or something like that, but sexual immorality is not a flare-up. Fornication <laughs> <laughs> is not a flare-up. Oh, I just got to do it right now because it's flared up. And we get that too. I got to do it right now. <laughs> but verse 22 says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace, patience kindness, goodness faithfulness, gentleness and self-control might say self-control. Self-control. And against such things, there is no law. Nothing can stand up against it if we're operating in this. So those 17 things of the works of the flesh can't stand up against these nine things of the fruit of the Spirit. It may look like this, you know, the flesh is, oh man, what can contain the flesh? Guess what? Walk in the Spirit, and it will contain the flesh. Can we give these brothers a hand? But that is what's going on inside us, that there's a constant struggle for supremacy. And again, that flesh will never die. I don't care how holy, how much Holy Ghost you got, how saved you are, that flesh will never die because I'm saved and sanctified people with the Holy Ghost. But again, I get up Sunday morning and I'm like, man, I don't feel like going to church. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what my flesh wants me to do, not go to church. That, that flesh tells me, man, you tired. Go sleep. Don't pray. But whenever I know what to do, and something tells me to do the contrary, then I got to do the contrary what it's telling me. I got to supersede what my flesh brought. Like I said, that bad boy is going to be talking forever until you take your last breath. And even then still, it's still going to, uh, I'm the last thing because rigor mortis is going to be shaking and stuff. <laughs> but you got to supersede and control what the flesh wants. So how do we walk in the spirit? Romans 12 1 tells us, says, I beseech you therefore birth, brother, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Again, God is putting the responsibility back on us, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. How do we do this? Verse 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, again, and put the responsibility back on us again, by the renewing of your mind. So, God is saying the responsibility for us to bring our flesh under subjection is we got to be not conformed to this world. Because being conformed to this world is to mimic the world. Being conformed to this world is to do everything identical to the world does. And sometimes we try to Christianize it and say, well, we're going to put God with it, like gospel hip hop. We try to put Christ into certain things. And, you know, one thing. Jesus didn't mimic nobody. So why does the church always got to mimic the world and then try to slap a label of Christianity on it? Oh, it's good now because we got Christ. It's Christian this. It's Christian that. We got a Christian nightclub. What? That just doesn't make any sense. I, uh, we was in the car yesterday and, and uh, I remember looking at uh, that song Mary Mary had, uh, God in Me. That was like the number five song in the club. 
I looked at my wife, I said, I said, how can you play this in the club? The God is me, the number five song in the club beat. And I said, they rock, God in me. And then they grind in this stuff, the God in me. I said, that doesn't make any sense. You're in the club talking about the God in me. Actually, they are talking about the God in me, because their flesh is what's in control. That's the God in them. That's what's operating. Go ahead, bro. Right. Right. Yeah. But it says, yeah, it says, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, God. And be not conformed to this world. Don't mimic the world. Don't be like the world. Because a person that does not conform stands out. If all the world wears red, I'm wearing black. Because I don't want to be like the world. I don't want to be identical or identify with the world system. I want to stand out because I'm a peculiar uh, creature, a royal priesthood of the Christ. And it says that we got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The complete Jewish Bible says to keep and keep renewing your mind. That means that if my mind is constantly being renewed, it doesn't have time to conform to anything because it's constantly changing and doing being in Christ. So we got to walk in the Spirit. And so how do we continue to walk in the Spirit? Galatians 2 and 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, we have to live in this flesh, y'all. Yes, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And verse 21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by love, then Christ is dead in vain. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Then in other words, I'm constantly either with Christ and I'm out of Christ. I'm doing this. You know what? You constantly can't. Because if we're constantly walking in our flesh, what we're doing is we're leaving the door an access panel for the enemy to come in then and operate. Because a lot of times we blame so much stuff on the devil. I'm sorry. The devil gets the pass this time. You're operating in your flesh. The devil didn't make Adam and Eve eat the fruit. They chose to eat the fruit. The devil didn't make Judas betray Jesus. Judas chose to betray Jesus. But when we're walking in the flesh, then, because we're out of the will of Christ, and because we're walking in rebellion, that is where the enemy can come in and say, now there's a vessel for me to inhabit because he's doing the thing after my nature, my former nature. His former nature was Lucifer, and he rebelled, became Satan. So because I'm operating in the flesh now, the enemy can come in and say, now I have a willing vessel who's doing what I used to do, who's doing what I'm doing now, and now I can go and manipulate what he's doing now even further. That's why when Saul, King Saul, rebelled against God, it says that the Spirit of the Lord departed from him. And the evil spirit came. He left him access. And Satan knows. That's why when Satan went to God, he says, does not you have a head around Job? Around everything that he has? The only reason why he knew that there was a head behind around Job and everything he had is because he was looking for a weak spot. He tried Job and he said, there's a head around Job. He tried Job business. He said, man, there's a hedge around this too. He tried his children. There was a hedge around them as well. He was constantly testing it, looking for a weak spot. And the enemy is looking for a weak spot in you. If you're walking into the flesh, it's just as open as that door is. But we got to crucify the flesh. Bring that thing under subjection. We do that constantly by prayer and by fasting. And by fasting. Um, the Lord gave me ten things that if you're operating in your flesh, because you know Ephesians tells us to put on the whole armor of God, right? Yeah. It says that ye may be able to stand in the evil days, putting it back on us. Having done all to stand is the key point. Having done all to stand, what have you done to bring your flesh under subjection? What have you done? Having done all to stand. Having done all to say, what did you do? A lot of times we quote that scripture that God won't put more on your bed, but it says, with the temptation, he will make a way of escape. We have a part to play in this whole thing. Yes, we have a part to play in it. God gave me ten principles. 
The first one was, know who you are. Again, Galatians 4 talks about because we're heirs. Number two is know your enemy, your struggles, your weakness. James 5 and 16 talks about confess your faults one to another that ye may be healed. The effectual bird plan of a righteous man availeth much. Number three, die to self. Romans 12 and 1, Galatians 2 and 20. Number four, watch and pray. Have a prayer life. Matthew 26 and 41, Ephesians 6 and 10. Fasting. Nobody likes to fast, but it's good for what ails you. Yeah. It's that nasty, that stuff they used to take back in the day. Yeah, it's that stuff. Castle and stuff. It's, nobody likes it, but it, for some reason it works. But nobody likes fasting, but guess what? It works. It works. And God does not have to call a fast every time. Do you know He will honor you calling yourself on the fast? Because if your flesh is manifesting itself, hey, it's time for me to fast. It's time for me to fast. And you call yourself on the fast. And see, what God is actually looking for, if all he's looking for is for you to give him something to work with, that if you recognize, you know what, the Bible tells us to let a man examine himself. So if you examine yourself, you know what, I'm walking in my flesh. You know what, I, uh, I let the weak get the best of me, and I know Sister Mary said praise me, and I just stood there, and I stood there and didn't say nothing. I may have gave two claps or whatever. You're walking in the flesh. When you give God something to work with, that is when God can actually come in and say, because you decided that you want to do this, I'm now going to strengthen you to be able to endure it. I'm going to strengthen you to bring you through it. And once you, you, somebody said you, yeah. once you come through it with the strength of God, then it's like, man, yeah. you ever wasn't able to do anything? How many can ride a bike in here? But at one point, you couldn't ride a bike. Yeah, and when you first got on, the thing shook to the left and the right, and sometimes you put your feet down to slow down, or sometimes you tried to ride the bike with your feet close to the ground because you didn't want to fall. But the day that you were able to ride a few feet with your feet still on the pedal, and you were able to turn and keep yourself up from falling, you were like, I'm so excited because I'm riding now, yeah. I'm riding now, and then you got to the point where I'm good now, I'm good, then you took one hand off the handlebar, I'm good now. <laughs> I'm good now. Then you took both hands off. Whoa, I've got to put that hand back because I ain't that good yet. <laughs> but when you drove that bike and you were so excited because, man, I learned how to ride a bike. It's just like that that God will strip you because your body is not used to balancing itself on two wheels. But once you learn how to balance it and ride, then you're so excited. That's the same thing of working through your flesh situation. That once you work yourself through it, oh, man, I got this thing under control. Oh, yeah, you may be too, but it's all right. This is good. I ain't gonna get hung up on it. <laughs> Fellas, be careful. Amen. Be careful. Because, because, you know, the enemy will use that very trick. You must be gay. And the flesh, natural reaction is to buck up. I ain't gay. I ain't no punk. I show you right now that I ain't no punk. <laughs> Let's do this right now. Ladies, all we got to do is sing sweet nothings. We come with a good game. Come with a good game. 